Boy, this is a great Tainted Jacob run. I hope I don't get killed off screen. <laughs> the Binding of Isaac. Boy, do I love that game. It's it's neat. I've, I've probably played more of that game than any other game on the planet. I, I, it's responsible for my love of roguelikes now, and yet I can't keep my greedy little mitts off this game. It's fantastic. But unfortunately, when you've played the game as much as I have, you slowly begin to recognize and see the cracks in its glorious, gorgeous little, little face. It's so pretty. It's amazing. So what what is this about? Damage scaling, what is that? Ooh, scary word. If you've spent any time playing this game, you've probably heard of it. And you probably hate it, just like I do. But if you don't, well, lucky for you, that's why I'm here. And we're pretty much just gonna talk about why I think that boss armor is stupid. And it's not fun. And I don't like it. And so, what is damage scaling? Well, it's a little bit difficult to pinpoint the specifics. I'll try to give a quick little rundown based off of what's on the wiki, but even the wiki itself says that it's kind of unclear. So, if you want to read more about it, just check the description. There's going to be more about it there. Um, but roughly, the idea is something like the game uses uh, four different criteria. It uses how much health an enemy has, how much damage the enemy's taken in the past four seconds, the value of its armor, and its starting armor protection. And it effectively just kind of nerfs Isaac's damage according to those statistics. So at the beginning of any encounter with an enemy that has this armor, um, the game's going to start off by reducing the incoming damage by 99%, and then that value is going to slowly go down over four seconds. This is going to give the game a rough estimate of what your DPS is, and then over the course of the fight, it's going to continuously, I think, um, recheck what your DPS is and adjust uh, a damage modifier accordingly. Every enemy has a different soft DPS cap, which is calculated by dividing the enemy's health by its armor value, and that'll tell the game how much damage you're allowed to do. So basically, in a nutshell, damage scaling just reduces your damage when you're fighting a stronger enemy. Enemies like Ultra Greed, um, those big upgraded enemies that you see in the Ascent, Ultra Greed, Greedier mode enemies, all that jazz. It sucks. If you've ever fought one of these enemies, it's not fun. And that's that's what we're here to talk about. So what ends up happening is you have a really outstanding run. You're doing crazy damage. You're mowing through everything. And then you get to the hush. And then it's a brick wall. You have to sit there for like 10 minutes just grinding this thing away. And that's not an exaggeration. It, it, the fight can actually go on for 10 minutes. Which is ungodly that is an unruly amount of time especially when it's supposed to take you 20 minutes to get to mom that's ungodly and if you think i'm insane check out all these other people who agree with me <coughs> funnily enough uh, edmund mcmillan actually tweeted about this mechanic in which he said that it's introduced so that when you're overpowered the game isn't a total boring slog to get through which is which is cute, because look at that. Look at this. You see this? What's on the screen right now? This looks like it's not a slog to you. I'm going to kill. So, I mean, this tweet kind of tells us everything we need to know about damage scaling and why it exists, right? Damage scaling exists as a balancing tool. Edmund doesn't want you getting too powerful, so he kind of cuts you off at the legs so you can't do too much damage and just mow the boss down. He even parrots some of this in some interviews that he does when he's talking about repentance. But yeah, a lot of people, I think a lot of people going in um, will be like, maybe taken aback uh, on some of the nerfs for the breaks, especially the easy breaks, um, because that's the first thing. It's like, 
it pains me to see somebody streaming with shitloads of people watching. And then I go over there and I click it and I see all they're doing is breaking the game. And then they're playing again. They're just breaking the game every single time they're successfully breaking the game. It's like, that doesn't really feel good to me. Like that, it, it, I know it feels fun and I understand why, but I don't want it to be that easy. Um, and making sure that we could whittle it down to the point of it. I think the rule was like two item combinations that break the game is a no-no. Okay, interesting. So we get from this that Edmund is not fond of people breaking the game and just waltzing through the game at an easy pace. He doesn't want the game to be too easy. And I guess that that makes sense. I mean, if somebody's breaking the game and they're enjoying themselves, then who am I to say no? I mean, they're, if they weren't having fun, they wouldn't be playing the game at the end of the day. But, and here's the kicker, we saw at the end there that Edmund mentioned that he wanted to nerf items to the point where you couldn't break the game with just two items. Right? He wanted to make it harder to break the game and make it harder to become overpowered. Which then makes me wonder, well then what's the point of boss armor? If you inadvertently make it harder to get overpowered, then you've inadvertently balanced the game and done what you wanted to do in the first place. If boss armor is meant to exist, so as to stop players from steamrolling bosses and make it actually feel a little bit more like a boss fight, well then by nerfing items, you've done that. I mean, when this mechanic was added in Afterbirth, these game-breaking fixes hadn't been implemented yet. In all of this footage that I've showed so far has to do with Repentance, which is the latest DLC, in case you were unaware. So, what's the point of boss armor now? It's harder to break the game. The game is arguably more difficult with Repentance. It's harder to find Spirit Hearts. It's more difficult to stay alive. So, what's the point? I don't have an answer to this question. I mean, if anything, the point of this video was meant to demonstrate that this is a vestigial feature of an older DLC. In Afterbirth, I think Edmund was beginning to notice that players were breaking the game in Rebirth. And I played during that time, and I can attest that the game was pretty damn easy to break. I think roughly one in every three runs you could get Guppy, you could use a D20, and just get an outrageous amount of items. So to counterbalance this, Edmund added the boss armor. But it was a band-aid on top of a larger issue. Also, couple this with the fact that Repentance and Afterbirth Plus have added more and more items to the game, and you only make it more and more difficult to break the game. Plenty of players of Afterbirth complain about item bloat, and perhaps I'll do a video on that in the future, but with every item you add to the item pool, and with the way that item weights work, item weights for those who don't know just means that better items are actually more rare because they're weighted differently in the item pool generation, make it more difficult to get these broken items that Edmund doesn't want us breaking the game with. So he's made it harder to break the game, and yet this mechanic which exists to stop people who have broken the game from steamrolling enemies still exists. Is what I'm saying clear? One thing that I haven't mentioned also so far is the fact that Edmund has repeatedly in other situations acknowledged the fact that not every Binding of Isaac player is going to play the game like a streamer or like a hardcore gamer and they're probably not going to have the same amount of hours as somebody like me. So there's not really much of a point in balancing the game around streamers and YouTubers. I mean, this clip from a Sinvicta interview kind of illustrates what I'm trying to get at. Right, right. It, but that's it. It's, so it's a weird thing too. I go over with, I go over this with Vin a lot, where the world that you that you live in isn't the world <laughs> that most people playing Isaac live in. The totally different world. Totally, totally different. A majority of Isaac players are casual players. Right. That just play the game as is and play it for fun. So. Which is it? Are we balancing the game around people who know how to break the game? Or are we balancing it around people who play the game casually? I mean, I understand not wanting 
game breaks that only take two items. That makes absolute sense. You know, if a, if a person who picked up the game can immediately break it, then something has gone wrong. But casual players, which according to him, make up the majority, aren't going to be breaking the game because they're probably not going to be going out of their way to like Google game breaks or whatever. Then why is it such a massive deal that we stop people from doing it. I mean, I'm not even wholeheartedly against the idea of stopping game breaks, but that's not what boss armor does. Damage scaling only stops a already broken run from steamrolling a boss. It doesn't stop you from breaking the game. It just stops you from benefiting from a broken run, I suppose. But if it's harder to get the broken runs, as you've said, and most people aren't breaking the game anyway, then what's... why do we have it? What's the point? Could you tell me? He seems to think that they're necessary from the tweet I showed earlier, so... So why? Why? That's pretty much my entire diagnosis of the issue. I think that the entire mechanic of damage scaling should be removed from the game. I think it makes certain bosses almost unbearably slow to, to fight and it's not worth dealing with. And uh, I'd love to hear what anybody else has to say. And I'd love to continue making more Isaac content, which is a game that I love so much I want to I just love it I love it so much thanks for watching